welcome back. That was a little bit of Sister Rosetta Tharp's Didn't It Rain. Great rocking gospel song. Um, as usual, we've put together a backing track for you guys to play along to. Um, for my part, I've tried to add some guitar licks that reference uh, some of her uh, style of playing on the classic recordings. I'm not playing any particular version of hers, just trying to reference what she did and, and pay homage to her style of playing as best as I can. So I'll walk you through the parts. Um, as you'll hear on the full track, there's a little intro section that leads us into the tune. So let's take a look at that first. Okay. Okay, so walking through that one time, we got the E note on the fifth fret, and then we're going to step up to the seventh. Sliding up to the ninth. Landing on the seventh on the high string, and then stepping up to the ninth. And then continuing on up to the twelfth, the root note on the twelfth fret. And then back the way we came. Excuse me, it's darn lead. So, root note, back the way we came. And then eighth fret to the ninth fret on the B string. Back to the root note. So, all of that put together. And then the second part of the intro, just this little bend, it's like a partial E minor chord, and I'm bending the minor third up to the major third. And then hitting the open string. Do it again, and then you come off and play the open string with a little push on the B string, second fret. So that together. Okay, so let's just walk through that intro one time, all the way. Assuming you're familiar with that turnaround there, classic little move. Stepping down in sixth, landing on the root note of E, and then hitting the five chord of B. And that takes us into the first chorus. Um, the first chorus, uh, basically what we're doing is just following the vocals with simple chords. Um, I'm going to use this partial E chord up here at the seventh fret and the ninth fret. The full E triad there would just be adding the root note there above, yeah? So you've got B, G sharp, and E. The rest of the chord, of course, would be here. Yeah? But we don't need all of that. So we're just going to use this top part of the chord like this. And every time she sings the word rain on the beat, bang, we're going to play that chord like this. And that takes us into the A chord. I'm just going to slide up to it. Same again on the E. Same again on the B. And at that point we would slip into the turnaround. Okay. Notice I'm using the same idea as before but just doing it up here with this partial E chord moving chromatically down ending up at this E inversion down at the 5th fret. So we've got G sharp, E, and B. Kind of like a D chord. And if I was to continue that idea, you'd get the full chord like this. Okay, but we don't need the full chord right now, but that's what's behind it. Alright. So once again, that little turnaround. So that takes us out of the first chorus into the main uh, verse section, which really just stays on the one chord the whole time. So uh, on the backing track, I recorded a, a rhythm part on the acoustic guitar. I just played an E chord first position, missing off the bass strings, and really focusing on the top four strings from the E root on the D string, um, and then just brushing down. <laughs> Just hammering on with my pinky there on the on the B string, second fret, yeah. You can find those notes up here at the fifth fret. And again, you can 
find them up here if we take an E triad for the ninth fret. Now that little riff, the little bend there, um, Sister Rosetta likes to play this riff. Again, when we're coming out of the verse, there's a section where the word rain is repeated over and over again, just before we come out of the verse section. So when that happens, listen out for it, and you'll be in playing this kind of idea. When they start to repeat the word rain, just join them and harmonize with the vocal using that bend. And when uh, the singing finishes, you've got enough time to throw in that little riff. And that would take us into the turnaround and into the chorus one more time. All right, so that gets us through uh, the main body of the song. I'll walk you through the solo section now, um, show you the riffs, and then it will play through it slowly, okay? So the solo begins uh, after the turnaround of the verse, uh, the chorus, sorry. So that first riff, I'm, I'm playing the B7 at the end of the turnaround, right? Just slide your pinky up the guitar and just kind of cut it loose when you reach around the seventh fret. And then switch to your index finger. And we're going to play this little chromatic riff from the seventh to the ninth. And then again, just slide up the neck a little bit <laughs> towards the root. And when you get up there, you switch again to your index finger and go into this um, E and C sharp dyad. Okay? And then again, just a, an E chord, top end of an E chord. And then again, the B9. Okay? Pretty simple. And then we go into the second section of the chorus. We've got this little... Uh, Again, using the minor third to the major third, G to G sharp idea. That's the first riff. So slide in that with the ring finger to the open string, and then a little pull off on the B string. Right hand, I'm just using these two fingers to achieve that. Okay, that takes us into the A chord change. I'm using the top end of the A7 chord. So back to the second fret, just pulling off. A tiny little bend there on the G as well. And just running down there, the E string, pull off, B string, pull off. One more time. Okay. And then once again, we're in E, so we do the same riff we did last time. Then take a little break for a beat, and then you play this little bend. Okay, so let's walk through that section slowly. I'm just going to play through the guitar solo part slowly so you can follow along, all right? Here we go. time a little bit slower
So that's the essence of the tune. Just learn the individual parts, practice playing along with them with the backing track, get them under your fingers. If you want to have a go at playing the solo, if you want to have a go at writing your own solo, uh, my advice to you would be to um, try to build a solo by following the chord changes, you know? So do something with this idea around the E chord, around the E blues scale, do something with this idea around the A chord. Again with the B chord. And if you follow the chord changes, it's going to sound like a more sophisticated guitar solo instead of just noodling away in the pentatonic scale, you know, like everybody does. <laughs> Try and avoid that. Okay, uh, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and have fun with the tune, and we'll see you all this week. Thanks, guys. Hey.